Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's the brain of the mainframe here. Pop XP, Mr. Nile Scala. With Teen Sensation, Mr. Billy Tucci. Teen Sensation. Desperate need a haircut, sensation. bro. Look at my freaking hair. I need a haircut. Dude, look at me. I'm like, oh my God, you know? It's the like hell? I really like, didn't do anything. It's about. like getting all puffy Why on the sides. Up like that? I gotta... Oh, boo-hoo, bro. Boo-hoo. Bill. Just a mess. So how you doing, man? What's going oh, on? Shh. I'm doing great, bro. I am doing great. I'm busier than a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. But uh, doing great. We're putting together Miss Fury. <laughs> Thank you very much, Snile, for the logo. Scala and Nikki Barucci love the logo. They want to pay you. It may only be like 50 bucks or so, but you're getting that 50 bucks, buddy. Well, I damn, dude. I'll do it. All right. I got to put this light on because I got to work. Sorry. Cool. Um, But nah, man, I'm psyched for, for today's first guest. Because uh, I was number six of the oh. contributors to his current Indiegogo campaign. And it, it is a beautiful looking book, isn't it? Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Well, do you want to you want to bring it? You want to take it home, yeah. Salah? So let's let this storm roll in with our, our first guest tonight, Mr. Eric Weathers. Like Eric, a how you doing? Like a tornado. Like, like a, tornado. a tornado, like a cyclone look from the Midwest. Cyclone. A pimp, look at him. Da, 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 pimp da, da, da. And everything. Do I need do I need a haircut? Two? I don't know. You, I don't know. You look like a rock star. You look like you look like a hobo or something. You look like uh, Brad Pitt in Legends of the Fall. Oh, I like that. That's oh, a good there one. There you go. I'll Thank take that you. one. Extremely long movie. Not as <laughs> not as not as long as Meet Joe Black. He likes those long movies because even Benjamin Button was long too. Yeah. What's oh, up, with up with that? Extremely long. Just make a, give me a give me a Brad Pitt in Fury. And Glorious yeah. Bastards. That's what go. I like. That's what oh, I like. Yeah, that's, that's what I like. Line, that's huh, what I'm guys. About. Tell you what. What? What? Mm -hmm. Brad Pitt's jawline. Wait, what are we talking about? What? Brad Pitt's Wait a minute. What? Come on, let's get to comics, huh? Sure. Oh, Metal Movies and Brewski's got uh, beers on. going on there. Dude, I could so go for a beer right now. Dude, so can I. I have not drank since. It's been a month since I drank anything. That's depressing. I'm out. I, ran, we, I just got back from vacation. I'm out. I haven't. I haven't restocked. Oh man, oh, dude, that's shit. not happening. Well, I'm gonna. I'm looking forward to uh, to uh, Wednesday to Saturday, Friday night. Friday night, gonna have margaritas. Very nice. To buy myself nice. a nice bottle of single malt. Nice, nice, nice. So let's get down to business. Look at this. Look at it. this freaking dude. behemoth. Battle Brick Road on Indiegogo. Eric Weathers. Dude, you're crushing it. 3,496% funded. What? It's a big fund. That is a great a, you fund. You have five days. You need to get 50 grand. Let's get to 40 first. We'll get you 40. Let's work on 40. But 50, we have, we've actually got a good stretch goal at 50. I'm sure we'll get there, though. Yeah, you oh. will. You will. Because you're going to do in demand as well, right? Well, this is only the first 30. We're going we're gonna to hit it again. Nice. Oh, on the, after this countdown. So, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So it's, tell us a bit about Battle Brick Road. Yeah, of course. Battle Brick Road is, in short, it's Wizard of Oz with guns. Uh, we, we took the, the main story of Wizard of Oz. It was written by my good friend Zeb Hatfield. I came to him with this kernel of an idea, and I said, hey, I'd like to do Wizard of Oz, but put a, a twist on it. What do you think? And he took my my bare bones idea and really fleshed it out and get made it a whole new world and made it just made it fantastic. Mm -hmm. So we tell the story of, of Thea Gale who grew up in this world of dust and destitution. She lives in the mid in the Midwest of the United States, but it's all desert. It's been desert for, for decades. So she's, she, she doesn't know anything else, but living in the desert, sort of Mad Max style. Mm -hmm. nice. And she's been looking for her dad her whole life. And, uh, unsuccessfully i should i should add and one day uh out of the blue she get they get a message from somewhere and it's her dad and says dorothy i'm here uh this this mythical land this land that you nobody can find it's still it's still here this is how you can find it and when you get here follow the yellow brick road and you'll find me so that sets her on a journey to go finally be reunited with her father she discovers this hidden world that was uh, secluded in this in the desert wastelands of the american midwest and she finds a lot of uh, badasses along the way to help her on her journey wow it's fascinating now how did she get there well she takes a cyclone drop ship nice that's yeah. cool nice yeah. so, so how she long gets the message has... and, and uh 
she has some former military training. She's not currently enlisted, but she knows some people and says, hey, um, they come to her with the video of, of her dad, that message. And, and, and she says, all right, I'm going to go. I'm going to take one of these cyclones and you can't stop me. So, wow. so she, that's, that's how, that's what sets her on her journey. And, you know, maybe she gets attacked by some flying monkeys along the way. Oh. I mean, you have some incredible character designs. You should, yeah. I mean, the scarecrow right here. I mean, this is the. I'm not, not. I'm not blowing smoke up you or anything here, bro. But this here is my favorite scarecrow design oh, I've seen in any type of Wizard of Oz adaptation. And there's quite a few out there, yeah, um, that have done it. But this one, I like this man. This is Thank my you. style. Thank you. Yeah, he was one of the first characters I designed. Went through a lot of different iterations. Um, the, the initial idea was, you know, Wizard of Oz with guns. And so each character would fill like a support, like a role in a squad. And yeah. uh, he, him being a scarecrow, ghillie suit, sniper, that whole thing sort of fell into place. So I just sort of went with it and uh, gave him some tactical gear and a sniper rifle and a crazy that's mask incredible. that hides his face. And that's how we got him. So, all right. So, you, 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 so some, you know, you, you found this story, you discovered this story. Uh, you reached out to, he said it was a friend of yours? Yeah, yeah. So um, I was doing some concept art ideas, for, and I was trying to put together a portfolio, and I decided to mash up military with Wizard of Oz. And so I was doing concept art at the time, and I thought, you know what, this actually make a good comic. Um, so I, I wrote sort of a rough idea, you know, character backgrounds, and, and I had some sketches and some stuff. And I, and I have a friend who's a writer. We live here in the same town together. And I said, hey, I had that and another book. And I said, how about we do a book together? Because we never have. And uh, I pitched him two ideas, and this is the one he latched on to. So we, we started working on that about two years ago. Um, that's when that was drawn, that one you're on right there. Um, and we did a small eight, five-page ash can. It was eight with a little backup sketches and stuff. Um, we put that out in 2018 as like a, here we are. This is the book. This is what we're doing. And then I hit pause and I did Flying Fortress and that was very successful. But now that that's all done and fulfilled, we're back on track for, for getting Battlebrook Road out, out to everybody. Wow. So now I got to ask you, those, what, what inspired, though, this like this story that he was writing? Now, now, did you actually work on the story with him? Was it something you already had developing and then you kind of jumped in on it? Uh, well, I, like I said, I had the, the initial sort of idea. Mm -hmm. I gave it to him. I said, here are my notes. They were very rough. Yeah. And he just really took it and worked on it and made it, made it way better than I could. So he took it and, and he started reading. He's a contractor. So he'll be, he, he would work during the day, you know, painting walls and stuff. And, uh, um, he would just listen to the audio book of the, the original novel. And he, he wrote it based off of that, taking a lot of inspiration from that and then mixing in what my ideas were. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we'd get, I'd, I'd get a draft of a script. I'd say, Hey, let's, I like this. I love this. Maybe we could change this. And then through several iterations, we came and we boiled it down to, uh, to what we have now. And this is the first book in a four book series. So it's going to be a much larger story. Oh, awesome. Metal Movies and Brewskis. I backed this book with the making of Tear. It's going to be big. Nice. It is. Yes, now, it what is. inspired your character designs, though? Because I even noticed, like, um, like with your Tin Man, right? Yeah. Like, the, it looks like he has almost like those, um, you know, like they have those uh, prosthetics that are like Yeah, the, the running prosthetics. Yeah, yeah the yep. running prosthetics. Yeah. Uh, I, I took a lot of inspiration from sort of all over. Um, those legs there, I... I You've seen those Boston Dynamic robots. Like I was just going to say, yeah, yeah, that you can. They, you know, they have these robot dogs that can go over any train. They kick it, and it keeps its balance. That's where I took that idea for him. They're really springy, like like those uh, prosthetic legs for people that that uh, do sprinting. It has that sort of spring to it. I really like that aesthetic of him being a sort of, uh, you know, agile uh, but tough character. And he and Lion. Uh, their designs have changed. Lion's design has changed a lot since I drew this, but it's such, mm -hmm. you know, people have seen this image for two years, so I had to, you know, I had to put it on the campaign. Yeah. Um, but uh, Tin Man's pretty much that, but uh, given the way the story unfolds, I'm, he's going to have minor, just more of an upgrade to his 
to his physique. And the lion is completely different now. He's um, uh, much more of a mutated version of a hybrid between a chimera, if you will, between a, a man and a, and a lion. Not so much like uh, like Ron Perlman in uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast, Beast on USA <laughs> back in the day, but a bit, a bit more monstrous. Um, so but those two don't show up until book two. This one focuses on Dorothy, Toto, mm -hmm. who's that little beach ball above the lion's head, and Scarecrow. So you're going to get to know these characters, and then down the yellow brick road or the battle brick road, you will in the future books you'll uh, you'll see you'll find more. More enjoyable characters. Now, if you don't mind me asking, why is Toto this uh, floating orb robot? Why uh, not? Yeah. Whoa, why bro. Not? Yeah. Whoa. One of, one of the inspirations when I was coming up with this idea, I was playing a game called Tom Clancy's, a Tom Clancy's game called The Division. Mm -hmm. And it had a lot of, in the game, you can have these little tech things. And one of them is a drone that you can send up and sort of, it'll ping the area and you can see where the bad guys are. Mm -hmm. And as I was coming up with this idea, I thought, oh, that'd be neat if, Maybe she has a drone that could do that. And I thought, well, that could just be Toto. And at the time, he was a, originally a drone, as we're used to seeing with the four propellers and, you know, very this way. And then I thought, that's cool, but you can't do anything with it. It's just a drone. It doesn't have any personality. Mm -hmm. So I turned him into a beach ball, gave him these wings on the side that will sort of act like ears. So he should be able to emote to the to the camera to the audience mm -hmm. with those you know as a dog will show you what's going on inside its head when it's you know angry or sad or scared so that'll be part of the idea of making him sort of still be dog like and he's gonna he's a character all on his own he's probably one of my favorites um he's a he's gonna be a sleeper hit i'll put it that way He's got, well, there's big plans for Toto in the future. Nice. Very cool. So now they're a tactical force, right? So what's each character's special? Well, they aren't, uh, they aren't a unit, at least not together at the first, you know, Dorothy is mm -hmm. new to this world and these people, the others have been there forever, for, for a long time. But if you were to break it down as if it were, if they were a squad, Dorothy would be your standard assault, you know, just a rifleman, um, just having an assault rifle. Maybe a sidearm. Uh, nothing, nothing too fancy. You have your Overwatch position, your sniper, with Scarecrow. You have your heavy weapons uh, kind of guy with the lion, and you have your demo guy with uh, with Tin Man. And then cool. Toto being the sort of Swiss Army knife that R two D two was in Star Wars. Oh, very cool. That's brilliant. That <laughs> is brilliant. So how many character designs did you end up going through? Or was this kind of all just kind of coming to you? Like, all right, I, I drew this, I like this. Or or did some of these characters, it's like, all right, I went through five or six different renditions. Uh, a lot of, the, actually, a lot of the stuff you'll see in, in that making of book, the supplemental book, which is part of the campaign. But the, a lot of them, like Dorothy, I, I think I pretty much got her right the first time, but I didn't know it at the time and then you do another and another and you're like, nah, it's not right. And the, I was right the first time. Um, I did, I, you know, she does have a military background, but she's not, like I said, she's not currently serving. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be able to have her not be completely um, useless out in the battlefield, but also maybe a little bit rusty. Um, and she had more of a militaristic, militaristic design in the beginning. And there's a page you scroll down and you see she's got a beret. Um, and that could be from her former uh, UDC unit that she was in. Uh, Scarecrow went through a lot of variations, but basically the same design, man in a mask, but in terms of like, I don't want to over, yeah, I don't want to overburden these characters with the gear, uh, you know, pouches and, and holsters and all of that stuff, just because mm -hmm. it becomes burdensome to draw. And I want to be able to make them look cool, but still maybe have hints of that kind of stuff. Uh, and then Tin Man is pretty much the same as he always has been, but Lion, I think, has gone through the biggest change mm -hmm. uh, of of all the characters because he started out more like a kind of just like a saber tooth look, and yeah. uh, now he's just just this beast of a of a man. Now, do you so, plan on updating uh, the campaign at all? Like maybe when you go for the next run here, um, updating some of the the images in, maybe showing uh, the character design of the of the new Lion and stuff like that. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm a little hesitant to show off Lion and Tin Man right off the bat because like, they're not going to be in this book other than some character designs in the in the making of, oh, okay. Okay. in the storyline. But so like the next campaign, it'll be a whole lot of that stuff. But, uh, you know, right now, Scarecrow is is very popular and it's a lot of fun to be able. He's just a blast to draw. I have so many awesome. questions, but I don't want to, like, try okay. to put you on spoilers. About <laughs> right? How That's the... I'm not uh, even how about you that. ask them and I'll let you know yeah. if I can answer it or not. Yeah, no, I, 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 uh, I saw you on uh, Comic Artist Pro Secrets talking about it, and mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my god, those are. The I'm like, yeah, that's a spoiler question. I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear this again. <laughs> <laughs> but now, um, the Scarecrow. Uh -huh. uh, if I can, let me know if this one is that a person under inside that mask, or does he not yeah. have a brain? No, we're not. We're not taking the literal no brain, no courage, no heart. We're not mm -hmm. doing that in that. As literal as the book does the book and the movie are, he is a human being under there. Um, he, uh, it's not as simple as I need a brain or I need a memory or anything like that. It's Zeb has really done well uh, making this. He's just taken it in such ways that I I would never expect, and they're not obvious either. Mm -hmm. um, with e with each character, and you know, because you do kind of want to stay true to how they are portrayed. But you don't just want to cookie cutter everything. So yeah, he's done really a great job in in uh, making this just its own mm -hmm. stand on its own. Yeah. So now, what are some Brian, of the? Uh, I'm sorry. Nah. Well, Brian Blevins has a good question here. Uh, was Oz always the background for this story? Yes, yes, it was. It, like I said before, it started out as like a concept art idea of what if it was Wizard of Oz, but they were a military unit, and it just evolved from there so it has always been from the very beginning it was always an oz and it wasn't like i didn't set out saying i want to make a wizard of oz story mm -hmm. it, it started out as this is kind of a cool concept for because i was trying to build a portfolio piece for concept art and uh i mean i just i had just gotten started and i thought man this would really make a good comic so i just sort of changed gears and and went as as a comic it wasn't like how could i make the wizard of oz cool as a comic book, it, it kind of has a different trajectory than that. Yeah. So what is what are some of the differences and similarities between the original uh, Oz and Battlebrick Road? Well, this one has a lot of guns. There's one gun in the original Wizard of Oz movie. You can see there's really? a scene where Scarecrow has a little six-shooter pistol for like yeah. a second, um, which is really <laughs> funny. Uh, you can Google you can Google Scarecrow Wizard of Oz pistol, and you'll see him like with a spook a spooked face with a gun in his hand. Um, <laughs> you know, we have the same characters. You know, we have a Dorothy, a Linus, Scarecrow, a Tin Man, a Toto. Mm -hmm. We have the witches, but they're not mystical, magical witches. They are AI constructs that were created to control Oz uh, by the wizard, by Oscar Emmanuel Diggs. He created these sister AIs that were supposed to work together and keep this place in harmony. But sometimes good robots go bad, and sometimes they go really bad. So that's where we get our East and West watchers. Um, the The idea of Dorothy in a land that she, you know, in in what we're what we're familiar with is Dorothy is this young girl who just doesn't want to be where she is. Mm -hmm. She wants to go somewhere over the rainbow. Um, she's not happy with it. In ours, she's she's on a specific mission. She's lost. Her, she her dad was taken from her when she was like four or five years old. She's been trying to find him this whole time. Doesn't exactly know where he is, but, you know, following leads and all of this stuff and always ending up on a dead end. And uh, so she's specifically seeking something. She has her, right, right. Yeah, she's got a specific mission. Yeah, Saving Private Ryan, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, we we follow, you know, we have the yellow brick road in it, but it's not, it's not how you're going to expect it. Um, we have... Munchkin land, but it's not a, a land of little people. It's oh, a really, it's a town under subjugation from the Watcher of the East, very much like the Wicked Witch. But you know, Dorothy crashes. She's not gonna. It, there are gonna be things that Zeb, Zeb has has given this uh, script over to some other writer friends of his, and as he said, he's very happy that when they read it, they sort of forget that they're reading a Wizard of Oz thing until maybe something jumps out like, oh yeah, this is Wizard of Oz. And then it makes That's it like, wow, cool. this is a really cool way of doing this. Yeah, yeah. So, and that just, I get so excited when he, when he talks about that because uh, you know, you want it to, 
there's a lot of Oz stuff out there and it's usually, it's usually like Oz with a different coat of paint. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I feel like we've gone down and retooled the engine and really kind of decked it out from the inside out. So it is Oz. It's got that familiarity, but it, it's, it stands on its own as well. Yeah. I mean, it sounds that like that, you know, from what you're uh, explaining of the story, you know, looking at the art and stuff like that, you know, you do kind of look at it and it's like, oh shit, this is a Wizard of Oz like adaptation or influenced by, you know, and, mm -hmm. I, and it seems like, you know, that's a really awesome goal to achieve is the fact that someone's enjoying this book and all of a sudden they see like, you know, you know, they see the words Munchkin Land or something or what have yeah. you. And it's like, yeah. oh crap. Yeah. This is freaking <laughs> oh, yeah. like Wizard of Oz. Yeah. yeah. You know? I mean, it's, it's a high octane thrill ride. And we open up, I mean, there's a, we open up with this awesome car chase, um, futuristic hover cars and hover bikes going, you know, and you know, we, it's freaking badass. I yeah. mean, plain <laughs> and you. simple. It's yeah. badass. Yeah. I mean, it's gorgeous looking. It's gorgeous. Again, like I was telling you before the show, I mean, I can't get over your scarecrow. Like I freaking love your scarecrow design. Thank you. Thanks. Everything looks great. I really can't wait to see more. I'm definitely once we're done because I'm not going to do it on the air, but uh, I'm definitely backing this. Definitely. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it, it's been it's it's a passion project, as cliche as that is to say. You know, these days it really is like we've been toiling away on this for for two years, just writing and rewriting and character designs and making sure everything was was right. And you know, they would get to the point where we think it's good, and then I'd 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 talk to Zeb a month later and be like, oh, uh, we have an update on the script. Mm -hmm. So there's been times there's been starting and stopping of me like layouts and drawing. So, but we're finally like, this is it. We're locked in. So yeah. Right. yeah. Production so now how many way. people have actually worked on this book? Uh, just me. I'm the artist and I guess creator. Uh, Zeb is the writer and uh, Farrah Normaliza is the colorist and I will letter it, of course. Incredible. So Incredible. the three of us. So you're doing this book. You've also, you know, Eric Weathers letters, everything. Um, Just about, yeah. <laughs> well, how the hell are you managing all this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I tell you what, it's funny that I, I launched the campaign on May 5th or 7th mm -hmm. or something like that. I forget the exact day. And uh, I had a great start. I mean, we came out of the gate guns blazing. Uh, we made like 17 grand in the first 24 hours. It was phenomenal. And it was like the next day I get, oh, hey, these books are ready to letter. And it was like six books I had to do. And I was doing all the promo. Oh. And then, so I was like, <laughs> I was pedal to the metal for two weeks straight. Oh, and man. then we took a vacation. We had a family vacation planned for like a year. Mm -hmm. and uh, So I was able to relax. But now I'm, I'm back. I'm home and I'm churning out pages. I'm still lettering, of course. That's the day job that pays the bills. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's been crazy. It's been a wild ride. So are you still working on? Are you still working on the the panels and everything and, and the pages? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're we're actively drawing it right now. Fantastic. When are you looking to actually get this into the hands of backers? Boy, that's a it's a tough question. With sort of the, things are kind of crazy right now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a, a a specific date set within the campaign. Mm -hmm. My plan is uh, hopefully having everything out the door by March of next year uh, because we've got to put together the book. I'm on a waiting list right now with Farah because she's so busy. She's like the Eric Weathers of coloring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's gone on. She's on so many, so many projects. Uh, so I, you know, I'm I'm in that queue. And then uh, once we get all that done, and I've got to put the supplemental book together. So, you know, as you know, as 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 you guys have, you know, Billy, you've worked on books, and and you know all that. There's all that. You know, you, it's a one man show almost. I mean, I've got Zeb, and he's going to help with fulfillment and all of that, but. Um, it's a lot of work, so we're we're shooting for March, and if you know the for the fans fest con convention is going to be in May, we got to get it out the door and to backers hands so that I can comfortably sell it at the convention without people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For that. Absolutely. yeah. and you got to yeah get it to your backers so you can right yep. so you don't have it there and your backers don't get it unless right. you put out this hey you got your backers anyone going to it to the con I'll bring it. Yeah. You know? But what? How many pages is the book? Uh, it's fifty three now. We we I turned a a spread into a double because I just I I wanted to, plus and it nice. and it worked out for the best because the page turns are better now. 
Uh, but yeah, it's 53 pages of story, so we'll have to make it a 56 or 60 page book with the extras in the back. But yeah, it's a big chunk. It's a big chunk of work. Uh, again, man, this is incredible. And everyone out there, I mean, take the time, check it out. Um, now, is there anything in the video that's different than what's described here? Are there any other images or anything or any other information anyone needs to check out? Should we uh, premiere this on our show here? Uh, I mean, it's it's just a quick 40 second clip. Let's telling check it you, out. Let's check it. Check let's it. Check it out. I don't hear anything. Oh, that's right, because we had the echoing before. Bump, yeah. bump. Look at that silliness. So we yeah. can't play that. We no, can't. No, we can't. We can't. Everyone just look at everyone's pretty faces really quick. No worries. Everything's fine. What'd you have for lunch today? Uh, left. I had a I had a turkey sandwich. A turkey sandwich. Nice. Thea Gale has grown up in a world brought to its knees by drought and monstrous dust storms. Now, a message from her long lost father will set her on a path through an exotic land. Along with her trusty sidekick Toto, she must befriend a ragtag group of outcasts to endure the many challenges along the way. Battle Brick Road Operation Zephyr is a 52-page graphic novel in the first volume in a four-part series. From artificial intelligence to genetic manipulation, Battle Brick Road brings an original and multi-layered story to the familiar backdrop of Oz. Back it today and help bring to life this apocalyptically fresh take on the classic American fairy tale. Only on Indiegogo. Yeah, man, I got to say, like, the art is just incredible. It really is. You're doing Thank a killer you. job on this. Now, if my memory serves me correct, uh, I think it was our first interview we ever did with you. Did you say that you're self-taught when it comes to your art, or did you go to school for it? Uh, no, no self-taught. Self-taught. Self 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 I got you. All right. No more echo, right? Test. No. All right, okay, we're good. Yeah, it's just it's this. I don't know. Something's up with Streamyard when you're sharing the uh, the audio from the desktop. It's echoing things out tonight. Uh. But anyways, we've got that under control. And uh, yeah, everyone, if you can get out there, check out Battle Brick Road. Uh, if you can back it, back it. This thing looks intense. Um, I can't Very. wait to see some more stuff. If you post a few more previews of some pages, that'd be fantastic. Actually, there is a new page up. Uh, if you if you refresh, I uh, I uploaded it right before we came on. What? There's a new page up. There's a new page here. Yeah. Scroll down just a little bit more. There you go. That's it. Oh, nice. Nice. That's awesome. World premiere. World, World premiere, premiere right here. Live Fantastic. on Pop XP. Yeah. And if you guys can, man, share, 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 share. Get this book out there. Get it on your Twitters, your Instagram, Facebook, whatever you're using, uh, and spread the word. Five days left on the initial campaign. Uh, this will go in demand. Uh, are you extending the campaign at all, or just going to go? Yeah, straight? we're gonna we're gonna extend it on. I guess it will be Sunday night or early early Monday morning, two a.m. Central. Um, Beautiful. I'm gonna. You, you got to play with that Indiegogo algorithm a little bit. So I'm gonna let it go to the last minute or two and then hit. Yeah. 60 days and then it'll go another 30. Fantastic. Now let me ask you one last question on my part here with the extension and it's just a yes or no question. Will you do you, will you be premiering any maybe other artists, any variant covers, anything special up your sleeve? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Mm. So Emphasis on yet. Yet. There's still a chance. Perfect, perfect. Look at Still a chance. Monkey ain't he? Look at He's like he wants to say something, but <laughs> he's he can't. He's, I, we, his we, will we, is strong, Billy. Yes. We, we, our cat. Look, look, look. We have plans. I can't wait. I can't wait to find it out. We have I can't wait either to find the plans. <laughs> All right, man. Eric, we appreciate it. You're always great to have on the show. Um, and you're My honestly, pleasure. man, welcome anytime. Uh, keep us in the loop with what's going on. Uh, any we'll other do. projects you're working on, um, you know? send our way and sure. uh thanks dude this is awesome like i said you'll see my name pop up as a backer after the show tonight sounds and, great uh i encourage everyone else out there if uh, this is your thing do it 
If not, heck, still share it. Help support indie creators. Eric, thank you for coming on. And Thanks, we will Thanks. check we'll and talk with you later. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you later, bro. See Freaking sick. Dude, that was I love awesome. his art, dude. That's, That's awesome. So We've seen a lot. We've actually had a couple, uh, you know, variants on, um, you know, the whole Wizard of Oz story. And, you know, this one takes the cake for me. He, yeah. He's killing it. That art is freaking insane. So speaking of freaking insane yeah, art, let's go. something fun, something I'm digging, man. Our next guest tonight is Mr. Greg Schoen. Greg, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are Did you guys? Get the last name right. Uh, you know what? Schoen, Shane, Scone. Yeah, I've lived my whole life having it wrong. I don't. Well, how does your mom? Right. How does your mom say it? Well, it's a S C H O E N and. Uh, to make it simple, we've we've always said Shane. Shane. All right, Greg Shane. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Shane. Shane. All right. I'm very man. excited to be here tonight. I, hey. I I love this show. We're happy oh, to have man. you on the show. We're so happy you enjoy the show. Now, this is your first time on the show. Um, yes. So what we'd love to do with our first time guest, Greg, is, you know, we'd like to get to know you. Um, you know, you've got a half hour slot here to promote your stuff, but we'd like to spend a few minutes getting to know you, kind of your origin yeah, story. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I like to call myself when it comes to comics, that guy. So, uh, it, to get to, to this point now, uh, you know, doing the Indiegogo campaign for the rascals, uh, when I was 25, I said, by the time I was 30, I was going to be a published, uh, you know, writer in comic books mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm in my forties now and that, you know, Basically, how it started was I decided to start getting into it. I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. I'm a prairie boy. And at the time, uh, Igor Corday was uh, a guy that was living in Winnipeg. He was working with Grant Morrison on the new X-Men, and he went to the same. How's he going, eh? Oh, did we lose him? He's frozen. He's frozen. Oh no! Comic book shop is. See if uh, you know I could maybe interview him for a site that was. Uh, it used to be a, a comic book site called Silver Bullet Comic Books, mm -hmm. um, and so he said yes. I interviewed him, and then you know, of course, did the sneaky thing, and I said, "Hey, man, I'm trying to write comic books. Can I send you scripts?" And you know, this is a guy at the time who's who's working with Grant Morrison on on X Men, and the guy is so nice. He said, "Yeah." Yeah, send them to me. I'll read them and I'll give you your feedback. Um, he gave me really harsh feedback. Uh, Igor is from Croatia and he's very blunt. And he and I actually became kind of buddies. And um, he taught me right away the the basics of the craft. Mm -hmm. And from there, I just started working and trying to you know find artists to work with, submit pitches to to companies. You know, get rejected, get rejected, get rejected. Um, fast forward about 10 years. I've stopped doing it. I've gone back to it. I come up with an idea for a book. Uh, and that book ended up being my first published work called Raygun. That got published by Arcana Studios uh, nice. from Vancouver. And that was last year. Raygun... Um, get you know is a very very cool project and actually i got to go to san diego comic-con last year oh nice. uh at the yeah at the arcana booth signing my book and selling it and uh the guy beside me was selling his book called goblins and that's the artist on rascals so we spent two days just sitting there just making our you know each other laugh pretty much for for you know how it is at the at that con you're just with somebody forever right Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, sometimes you last... married to them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, geez. <laughs> she's oh, not geez. watching. It's okay. No, she's not watching. She hears she's not watching. Tag. She could always watch it on playback, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, um, shoot. You don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end, Kurt says, uh, the artist, uh, Kurt's Burging, he says, hey, man, um, we should work together. Which is like, you know, everybody says that. Hey, yeah, yeah, that'd be really cool if we did something. I didn't think anything of it. And then uh, he sent me a picture of four rabbits. 
And he said, what do you think about these characters? I said, yeah, they're really cool. They're cute. He mm -hmm. said, yeah, this is, this is going to be it. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. And that's how, that's how we started working on Rascals. That's freaking awesome, man. And uh, here we are. The Rascals Book One Crossroads at Porksburg. <laughs> yep. So now this is obviously there's some paranormal, supernatural going on in this. Before yes. we get into this. Oh, Rick, here we go. I need to know something. Oh, uh, here we go. Do you believe in ghosts, UFOs, Bigfoot, the supernatural? Ha. Huh. So I don't know about the supernatural and ghosts, but when it comes to aliens, literally my sister and myself were raised to believe in aliens. We had parents where when we said, hey, mom and dad, uh, you know, are there aliens? They looked looked us dead in the face and said, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Raised them right. So, <laughs> Did they have an experience? How are they so confident? Or are your parents? I just think it's, I, well, first of all, my mom is a, a big list, was a big listener to Art Bell. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that, yeah. uh, <laughs> I think that was a big thing. Um, and I think it's just, it's the same, same belief that I have is if the, you know, the galaxy and the universe is infinite, doesn't that mean that there's an infinite number of possibilities? And if so, how are you going to discount anything? Um, you know, so true. That, that's what I'm thinking anyway. So but do you think that they can be physics? Yeah, remember the conversation we had that it's yeah. almost on a celestial plane or something or another dimension is what these these aliens are that are coming here, say the, the UFOs and all, because how could something travel so far and live? You know what I mean? To yeah. from a, you know, a, you know, from from a you know a light year away, even how the heck and how could they get the propulsion to get here? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like so, and you wonder, like, if they have, how come they haven't tried to take us over or take us over? Or no, I, I totally, I totally think that that alternate dimension thing is is a plausible theory because their their physics are different than us. Even how they're moving, uh, you know, you see all these Navy aircraft pictures and yeah, you know, pe yeah. people describing what's happening, and if if they are in fact extraterrestrials and they're here or extra dimensionals as I call them and they're here. Uh, they can't be moving like that using our physics. Correct. So I think probably we're just seeing them on a spectrum that our eyes can see and our brain can see, but we can't kind of, as a as a people, to, you know, perceive as a as a race kind of thing. So I think they're just on a different yes. vibration, man. It's absolutely fascinating. To it me is. Oh my god! <laughs> it is. Can't wait to see. So, so we have to have. Greg, back on to our uh, UFO show. So that we can talk the physics of UFO astrologies, Billy. That's, yeah, I love talking about that stuff. X. I love that crap, man. I just I love, I don't even, I shouldn't even say crap because I don't think it's crap. I just love that stuff because it's just the unknown, the vastness of the universe. Mm -hmm. You know, what the hell is out there? Think about 100%. it, right? Maybe, maybe they have teleportation. Or something. Who knows? They can just blink from one area to another. Yeah, but can they and space well, and time? Can they teleport ships, though, and all objects. Hmm. Well, let, you know, let's get let's let's keep on well, the, let's, get, let's get right down to the nitty we, gritty we here because we're just being a couple rascals ourselves now. So, <laughs> Greg, let's get into the rascals here. So, this is this is your is this your first campaign? So this is this is my first campaign. Uh, Kurt had done one previously uh, for another book. I think maybe I don't know if it was Indiegogo, um, but yeah, this is our first campaign. Um, it's been really liberating mm -hmm. to to do this because, like I had mentioned before, I, I call myself that guy. You know, the guy who would write these scripts and these have these concepts and then pair up with an artist and then you know, either pay or do whatever to do the pitch. And then, you know, that happens all the time. And it's, you're always trying to break down that door yeah. and, and you're, you're trying to get approval from somebody to show people your work. And then as mm -hmm. soon as we started doing this, I realized we're not asking for approval. We're simply making what we want to make as fun as we can make it for, for the, the audience that we want and just giving it to them, and yeah, this is the first campaign, and it, but it probably won't be the last, man. This this has been a really fun experience so far. Well, yeah, so it's amazing. It, it looks even and, it, and it looks fun, like man. animation. Like you can easily see someone picking this up. Like we got to make this. Yeah. Well, I mean, Kurt's, check out. It just gets better mm -hmm. and better as you go through. It, the it's fantastic, isn't it? 
Um, Kurt is an animation director for Cartoon Network. And oh, wow. he's worked on, you know, Curious George, Anastasia, Sinbad, uh, Titan AE. He was the animation director for Tom and Jerry for four seasons. Um, he's he's well versed in, mm -hmm. you know, being a, a, an amazing cartoonist. And we really worked together to make the, there's the rascals right there, Alana, Tony, Max, and Rosie. <laughs> we, we wanted to make them uh, iconic uh, yeah. and, 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 if you look at uh, any one of them, if you see them again, you're going to remember them. Yeah. Yep. So that yeah. I mean, he's incredibly talented. I mean, he is. Wow. So what's yeah. the story? What's what's the concept? Okay, so basically, uh, the Rascals are a uh, teenage uh, rabbit, teenage pop punk band. Nice. And they're on their way to the uh, battle at the barn in Porksburg when their old jalopy van breaks down at a crossroads. And you're seeing it right now. And at this crossroads, this old goat comes up to them and says, hey, I can help you, but you have to defeat me in a musical contest. So they have a contest with the goat. The goat plays his fiddle. The ra <laughs> rascals aren't too, uh, too impressed. And they play. And because they're so desperate, to get to this gig because there's a super agent, uh, Justin Beaver's agent is uh, going to be looking at the, <laughs> he's, he's at the show. They play their hearts up. They play like they've never played before and they defeat the goat. Well, the goat transforms into a demon and says, I think you cheated. I've never been defeated. And until you play a song better than the one that beat me, you're cursed. And that's the setup. Nice. That's <laughs> great. I mean, look at that. That art is unbelievable. It's so it's cool. unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, the cool thing about this process, too, for me was um, working with other artists on projects before. I've always, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a atypical comic script writer. I write full script. You know, page one, panel one, bit bit bit, set it up. Oh, he froze there for a he second froze. again. Actually, oh, <laughs> old school Shinobi. I was thinking the same thing. This, but this, Kurt this sounds and I, like because a I saw of Tenacious D, Charlie oh, Diaz, sorry. X Files, and Captain Carrot. Yeah, sorry, uh, Greg, you froze up for a second. So I was just checking this uh, <laughs> comment out. It's the Japanese connection here, probably kind of not working. Um, but um, so when I when I saw Greg, Kurt, where are work, you? I live in Japan. I'm in I'm in uh, Shimokitazawa, Tokyo. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Can we talk vending machines sometime? For sure. Man. I have an incredible fascination with food vending machines in Japan. Food vending machines. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yes. If you, anything you need, it's in a machine here. Um, every, every corner has a drink machine. Um, I know. It's incredible. Well, how Cash society. And with the virus, with the COVID virus. Uh, well, it was, it's, uh, you know, it's very interesting because, you know, being as close as we are to China yeah, uh, and having all of that New Year's tourism, uh, to be blunt about it, the government was completely lying about the numbers at the start because of the Olympics. Everybody forgot that the Olympics was supposed to be this year. Have you noticed that all the weird stuff that's happening? Yeah. The Olympics were supposed to be the thing. And so Tokyo, basically the IOC... And Tokyo had a deal. Whoever gave up first had to pay. So they they weren't kind of accurately reporting things. Uh, and then also, unlike North America and Europe, where they could actually have a lockdown, where they could you know tell people, you can't do this, uh, due to the fact that Japan can't militarize and they can't have things like that, they could just have a strong advisory not to do certain things. Um, and because the Japanese are so well-organized and compliant, and, you know, if you think about it, everybody wears a mask anyway. Yeah. If, if you have a snipple, you wear a mask. The contagion rate here and the is really, really low. Every And people are going back to work. Uh, you know, I work from home now, uh, do one day a week at the office. So, yeah, that's about it. Well, what do you do that you're in Japan? Uh, so right now I'm actually an account manager for a recruiting firm. I head up the technology team here. 
And I specifically cool. focus for myself on video game companies. Wow. Oh, very that cool. Cool ass life. <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Next time I'm in Japan, I'll have to look you up. Yeah. Oh, for sure, man. I'll, I'll take you guys. Yeah. Vending machines. Yeah, Will I'll you take you guys out. Vending machines with him, with Greg. <laughs> Yeah, I'll it, take it him to funny. Frank bar. even put up because this is actually very true. Uh, Niall loves food vending machines. We'll watch YouTube for hours on end. I just watch <laughs> different YouTube shows about it. But uh, back to what's important here, and that's the script yeah, book sorry. you have. Uh, so now they're cursed, right? So this is oh, now uh, so, all the. Yes, and I was I was just about to tell you uh, how we made this. Okay. So uh, instead of doing it full script, I send it to the artist. The artist bangs it off. Uh, you know, I saw Kurt. And I saw what he could do with characterization and storytelling. And so we actually did this Marvel style. Oh, cool. So so I wrote a short story. I sent it to Kurt. He drew it. And then I put the dialogue over. So it's a real collaborative thing between the writer and the artist. It's this is this is um not your your you know modern day way of doing things, but we use the the you know, most tech, you know, the most advanced technology we could to make the book. Uh, and it's, it's a very traditional story told in a modern way. It's just a really cool mashup of, of, uh, creativity to make this sucker. Yeah. Now is the book done? The book is completely finished. All of the perks are, are purchased and ready to go. And we are going to, well, the, the plan is I'm going to go here from here. Hopefully, you know, there's a, more free transportation between uh, Vancouver and Japan. And in August, I'm going to Vancouver, uh, help sign all the books, help ship everything out uh, and yeah, get it done. Uh, our whole whole thing was the rascals is something we're always gonna be working on. We love this. We, we, we want people to be enjoying this. We want uh, parents it's to be able to hard. pick it. Yeah, it's I know. Hard. It's, it's <laughs> It is. It's really good. I, I you were saying um actually continue on you want parents to I want people to enjoy it. I think a mm -hmm. lot of what's out there right now is great, but it's for such niche audiences and and you know nobody's reading the books and passing them to their kids anymore. They're either buying them for their kids or they're buying them for themselves. Yeah. And you know when Kurt and I were growing up, we could watch cartoons with our parents. We were in sync with them. We knew it was happening. Yeah. And we wanted to make that shared experience with Rascals where an adult can read Rascals and just be like, this is really funny, man. Like, we get the tropes. We, we know what they're playing on here. Uh, you know, it's, it's done in a new way, um, but we get it. It's funny. And then give it to the kid. And yeah. the kid can read it and go, I like that too because of X, Y, and Z and this gag. And guess what? You're enjoying something together. Uh, and, you know, we're already working on book two. We, we have put this out at a price point that is really, really reasonable. Uh, we wanted to get it into people's hands as soon as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as book two comes out, you know, the announcement that we have on Indiegogo is, you know, we did it. We made mistakes, obviously, with the campaign. Uh, and by listening to your show, actually, it's very much helped us to figure it out is, you know, we put the target too high. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if, if the target's too high to get what you want, people like to back winners. So if they're if they're not seeing it's it's going bing 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 they're not going to chip in they probably won't even click on it, but even for what we have now from the backers, uh, you know we're going to ship them their product. Everybody's going to get what they need, and we're going to have enough for when book two comes out. We'll be able to do book one, book two, bogos, buy one get ones. Yeah. So very good. And your very numbers good. will be bigger than for number two. For yeah, sure. because yeah, best practices uh, and. Uh, you know, the fun is still going to be there. And and uh, the thing for Kurt and I is to just keep on rolling this property out and to have fun with it and to have people talking about it and to recognize rascals. That's the rascals. We know this. Yeah. Very cool. So it, how many do you already have a couple more issues laid out? So, yeah, we're working on two right now. OK. Uh, and we're hoping to get two or three out a year. Now, let me ask you, though, did, was that really what inspired this, though? Was it that kind of look, there's not much out there for parents and children to relate to. There's not many books out there um, that are really gravitating towards bringing new readers into comics. 
Um, cause I mean, you know, from looking at this, it, it, you know, it seems to be a good, a well, all ages book. Um, mm-hmm. what, what was, was there a driving force there that really kind of pushed that? Yeah. Uh, that's a really great question. So those two days Kurt and I spent at San Diego, we really agreed on a lot about the industry mm-hmm. and what's happening now and what we really enjoy about comic books. And we realize it's really not out there right now. Uh, and we, we just wanted to provide that. Um, so those conversations, all of those topics that you just mentioned are what happened after he sent me the, the picture of the four rabbits. Well, what is this? You know, who, who are they? What are they doing? You know, wh- why do we want them to do that? Is it going to be funny for kids? Are, are adults going to be, you know, are they going to like it? Uh, and, you know, we have a working relationship where it's very open and we, we, we're, we just constantly agree on things. So that's, great. that's it. That's rare. Yeah, too. <laughs> yeah it is. That's it really helpful. is. You know, yeah. for I can't stand yeah, Billy, really but is. I'm still here, you know, it's just, <laughs> you just got to freaking muster through it. Right. <laughs> I kid. Yeah. I kid. So, you know, we, we have what we need. I don't know if we'll extend the campaign. I don't know uh, what, what we'll do in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do know that the people who have ordered what they, they've they ordered in terms of, of books and perks are going to get them. That's fantastic. Uh, and, yeah, man. And we're just working on book two. And Well, what are you doing for, rolling. like, social media and for getting it out there? Are you trying to get on other YouTube shows? Because a lot of the Indiegogo creators and stuff like that, there's a good kind of, you know, Uh, a community out there you know there's a lot of other shows that are creator hosted um Mm -hmm. you know are you really trying to push uh yeah getting on those shows spreading the word of the rascals and uh you know trying to find them yeah Yeah, i have uh, yeah really you know i made some really good friends in arizona on the absolute geeks podcast uh they were huge fans of ray gun so I've been on that show a few times, uh, Constructing Comics podcast. Uh, I've been on uh, Soda and Telepaths. I, you know, th- this one, I, I've, I've just been constantly now, trying to develop a network. Now, Greg, I hope uh, this gentleman doesn't mind, but I happen to see a post uh, that mm-hmm. you're pretty excited to be on a show with uh with another a creator of sorts. Oh, and, yeah, uh, yeah. If he doesn't crazy. mind, I wouldn't mind popping him on a little early um oh wow. that's okay if i get a thumbs up in the camera i'd love 100%. to have uh mr chuck dixon join us right now hey 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 bro how are you good good how are you doing oh you know we're doing pretty terrific you know chilling out how are you brother fine doing fine did you see this book by our new friend greg here i love funny animal stuff this stuff looks really cool yeah. <laughs> thanks really i'm actually going to pledge right now for it <laughs> oh thanks man so, I am too, you know, because you know my my kids, you know my kids are young. They're gonna they're gonna be turning two years old soon. But I've actually been um, like Caleb Thusat, who's a a creator we've had on the show. I whenever he has his children's books come up, I always back them, and I'm kind of building up this stockpile for them, you know. So hopefully, I you know, because a lot of great stuff, uh, you know, create your own stuff out there for all ages and kids. Um, I'm trying to just kind of stockpile some good things for them, just because in the uh-huh. mainstream, you know, it's I'm not really liking what I'm seeing. So, you know, this mm-hmm. looks this looks great, man. I, I yeah, encourage you, you extend it. I encourage you get yeah. on as many shows as you can. I mean, unfortunately, when you're doing this, running the media, the social media, it's a full-time job, constant pushing and whatnot. But uh, mm-hmm. it's cool that you're working with, you know, an, an animator who's who's doing these illustrations and everything. And uh, it's freaking killer, dude. I, I really like what you're doing here. Thank you very much. It's... Uh, what's your Twitter ha- handle? Because I just backed it, so I'm gonna. Uh, the Rascals at Gregory Shane. Rascals. Now, not to put you yeah. on the spot, Greg. You were you wrote a nice post uh, uh, about Chuck. You know, as a, you know, a creator that's inspired. I can't believe anything. this, man, Mr. Dixon. I I love your stuff. I <laughs> I absolutely do. Yeah, it's uh, well, it's you're you're one of my favorite comic book writers. It's important what you're doing because there's not enough kids comics out there. They. You know, we've kind of lost a couple of generations of readers here. Yeah, and this is the kind of comic that'll bring them in. It's, it, uh, you know, I, I mean, I only got to look at it a little bit, but it's, it's attractive. It's cute. It looks really clever, and it doesn't look like it panders. Which right. Is, 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. So very but it was cool. fun, like they're yelling at each other and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's it's cool. <laughs> yeah, they uh they're they're teens. They're and they're they're pop punk teens. Uh, yeah. you know, the lead singer Tony is is highly arrogant and mm -hmm. he thinks that uh they work for him basically. <laughs> and you know they all have unique personalities. It's kind of like a, uh, what I was mentioning before about the design and the talking about the characters, because if you want to make an iconic character, even by their images, you know Tony's got an exclamation point, Alana's got the the purse. Uh, you know we want people, especially kids, to be able to instantly recognize them and yeah. understand where they're coming from. Yeah. But you know the funny stuff comes from the conflict and. Uh, you know, we have the rival band there. That's the Sleepy Bucks across from them. Uh, and they they're, they call themselves punk, not pop punk. So there's a constant conflict going on there. Uh, and kids kids like it. You know, they, they, they do have arguments with their friends and they do have problems that they have to sort out that aren't related to supernatural. Or uh, So we made sure to, to make that an element. Very cool. I just love those cats. I love uh, that. You're right? <laughs> <laughs> Little demon cat creatures. I want a sticker like that. Right? That would yeah. be awesome. <laughs> That'd be great. Well, Greg, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, sharing your project. Thank you. Uh, please keep us in the loop. We're glad you enjoy our show and that you watch it frequently. Very much so. Um, I think you're the only person, so that's a plus. No, I'm sure. <laughs> we have so many great people. We have so it's many great, great fans out there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man, this looks great. Keep doing it. I really encourage you to push this. I think uh, just keep hitting it with social media. You should be able to hit that goal. Again, it's a good all ages book. Um, it, it's attractive. You know, it looks good. You know, yeah. re I've read through all your sample pages. I mean, everything's great. So I definitely Thank you encourage you keep pushing it. I, I wouldn't stop it after the 13 days. Keep pushing it, man. Yeah. Hey, okay. Greg. What's your, yeah. what's your uh, Twitter handle again? Is it just at Greg Shen? Sh How do you say your last name? Shen? Shane. Uh, Shone, yeah. S C H O E N. I got, yeah, your glasses. All right, good. I just backed it. Boom. All right, I just tweeted. Awesome. Out. I, yeah. Chuck, I just went on the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still here. He's I'm still, still here. here. <laughs> so, everyone, if you can. Uh, check out the Rascals book one crossroads at Porksburg a little deeper. Um, share it on your Twitter, your Instagram, Facebook. Uh, if you know anyone out there with children that love comics, uh, you know, help spread the word, help grow the book, help them meet their goal so they can get book two and three and four and five. And however, however long they want to go out there and keep it going. Cause this even looks like They're a coming. great, uh, adaptation for an animated series. So good luck with everything, Greg. It looks fantastic. Uh, you're always welcome back on the show. And, Thank you very uh, much. Again, keep us in the loop, and I'll be reaching out to you so we can talk vending machines. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. All right. Luck, Greg, Chris. have it's a great that. night. Thank you right. so much. Thank you. Mr. Dixon, how are oh, we yes. tonight? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. All right. We got another fellow creator here that's come in, Mr. Demetrios. Hi, guys. Hey, how are you doing? Kala. You can hear me good, Kala. <laughs> hey, Chuck. How are you doing? Pretty good. Hear you loud and clear. Loud and Great. Clear. Now, now yeah. is your uh, you got a third guy coming on tonight? No, um, Taylor wasn't able to make it. I sent Frank an email earlier. I let him know. All right, no problem, no problem. So, all right, guys. I mean, uh, Chuck, welcome back to the show. I think this is your th maybe fourth or fifth time coming on. Something awesome like having you back. Uh, Dimitri, is, do you go by Dimitri, Dimitri? How do you... Uh, Dimitri, like so Dimitri, Dimitri's fine. That's fine. Right. It's easier. All right, Dimitri. So uh, since you've this is the first time you've been on uh, Pop XP, Crowdfunding Comics, whatever you want to call it, you know, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, about your, you know, what you have going on, your comics, your origin story? Okay. Um, so I uh, created Black Box a few years back. Um, one of the things that inspired me was things that I was doing for a living, which is like banking. Um, and back then I was collecting a lot of original art. I met up with Tucci a few times way back. I don't know if he remembers. We went for coffee. We had lunch yeah, and I was kind of telling him my plans in advance, years in advance. And, um, I mean, it was a lot of work that was put into cause I wanted to do it right and, and do it justice and put out quality. Um, so, I mean, I hired pros like, um, Scott McDaniel, Andy Owens, uh, Teo Gonzalez, um, Taylor Esposito, who was supposed to be here tonight. Uh, most of these guys worked for DC, Marvel, um, 
probably some of the other like in, indie indie guys as well. Um, so basically, the IT guy was sort of a detective within the banking world, figuring out corruption. Um, so that was kind of what launched us, and it was very um, out of the ordinary, I guess, for the comic industry because it's not your typical superhero book. Uh, it has, a, I'm sure, it's certain people who who like it who are into the financial sector or want to know more about banking. Uh, but I thought we made it very uh, dramatic and interesting. Um, there was times even we actually reached out to Chuck, and he even gave us some advice on what to do with the characters. And and Chuck is such a great uh, writer, and he knows how to make even the smallest scene interesting. And one of them that he advised us was, well, if he, you were always giving this guy such a bad day is like have like some bug like in his cereal when he's uh, waking up in the morning that's ruin his day as soon as he gets up. And it's just like a little scene, but it's just impactful, I feel like, and, and, and starts that the tone. I don't know if you remember that, Chuck. It was a while ago. It was a while ago. <laughs> so I'm always giving people advice. And then forgetting it myself. <laughs> so, the, I mean, at, at the time, I didn't have black box uh, in my head. I was just trying to f focus on IT. And the more I went into it, the more I enjoyed it, the more I thought of other ideas. And I felt like the best way to go about it is to just self-publish and just create black box. Um, and once I did that, I felt like, you know, now we have a platform to do things that are impactful, meaningful. Um, so the character that I wanted to develop was Militia, who's the female lead in the book. Um, it shows how she goes through as a female through the military. Um, and we needed somebody to help expand further to make her that, that quality character that uh, we want her to be in. And, and Chuck did that. Um, one of the amazing things that he did was the name. He brought up Militia through the story, if people read it. Um, is basically when she's out on her mission is these bunch of kids that pronounce her name Melissa, which is her real name, Melissa May. And they pronounced Melissa as Militia. And that's how we came about with her. Her nickname is Militia. And I, I just thought that was brilliant on his part to bring it in that way. Mm -hmm. Now, before we actually get into the campaign, just tell us a little bit more about Black Box Comics. How long have you been publishing um, how many different titles are you publishing? So the first title we launched, like I said, was IT in March 2017. Yep. We In 2018, we did Volume 2. And just last year, we, we launched Militia of the series, the single issues. Mm -hmm. And then we did Cyclist with Kevin Graveau, who's, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the oh, creator yeah, of Un Kevin. Yeah. Underworld. Yep. So Kevin's a great guy. Um, and that was a home run for us also. After that was Project Icarus, which issue five is coming out. I believe it's either July or August. I can't remember because everything got delayed because of this whole COVID thing. Yeah, that hit everybody, man. <laughs> so, and the title after that is Bigs and Tiny, which you guys had on the show. I believe it was last year. And we did a Kickstarter for that. So that was our first technical, first Kickstarter that I did or we did. And this is our second now for Militia. And they're both successful at this point. Awesome. So now the campaign you currently have. So this is for Militia, the trade paperback. Correct. All right. So you guys have 10 days to go. You, you've, you've met your goal. You got 108 backers. Um, if you don't mind, I mean, uh, do you want to play the video for everyone? Sure. You, got, you can play it.
Thanks. Yeah, that's incredible. Thanks. So yeah. now, Chuck, if yeah. you don't mind me asking, so how did you get brought into this? Uh, well, I, I don't know. You know, uh, I guess Scott McDaniel brought my name up, I would imagine. Uh, Demetrius should tell us that. So I, I only know from my end that I got a phone call from Scott and Demetrius, you know, laying the series out to me. They're basic ideas, and they sent me um, a rough outline. Mm-hmm. Uh, of what they expected out of the series, and I just kind of took off from there, and you know we, you know we came to an agreement on what the series would be like because there were things I wanted out of it and things they wanted out of it, so we had to have a common ground there. Yeah, uh, I mean this thing looks incredible. It's hard. We've Holy had the pleasure God. that Demetrius sent us uh, <laughs> some uh, pages from the first three issues, actually, with covers and things like that, and it's just fantastic. I mean. Tell us about the artists, please. I mean, I love that to get to tech right. You know, you know me, Chuck. I'm such a stickler for that. Kind oh, of no. I'm the same to, way. Right? You, right? It drives you crazy, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it's spot on. So, and, ju- and I'm appreciative when someone actually takes the time to do something <laughs> right, you know? So, Jethro did the interior art. Jethro Morales, uh, he's from the Philippines. Um, and he did a real fantastic job. And any questions he had, but very minimal. Um, you know, he, he shot it my way. I would ask Chuck, but it was, it was so few that, you know, he was able to fly with it. Um, we did also include some art from other people to do like pinup art. Um, so like the one that you're looking at now is an Italian artist, uh, Martina Fari. She's fantastic. She has sort of that manga anime kind of style. Um, and the covers, I tried doing something different this time where, each cover was done by a different artist. Um, the first one was by Jonathan Lau, and he's more well known for doing things like Red Sonja for Dynamite. Mm-hmm. Um, the second cover was uh, Patrick Blaine. He's done stuff for Top Cow, Dark Horse. Uh, third is Sean Chen. I'm sure you guys know Sean from Marvel. Oh, yeah. yep. He's on Batman Beyond right now. Yeah. The fourth one is uh, Brazilian artist Kleber Souza Lima, who's fantastic. And another Brazilian artist, Deborah Carita, on issue five. So I, I just wanted to play around and just get everybody's different take on the character and see how it developed. Very cool. So tell us about the story, though. So what, yeah. you know, it, within these five issues in the trade ba- paperback, what are the uh, backers going to be looking forward to? I'll let Chuck. Chuck wrote it. Like, he could tell the story better than me. <laughs> well, yeah, I, wanna, I want everybody to know up front, it's not a, a girl power book. You know, it's not a Mary Sue book. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's as close to, um, you know, a, a women in combat in the war on terror as I could, you know, go and make it realistic. Um, the, the predicate for most of the series is, is that uh, Militia or Melissa May and her team, her all-girl team, basically get inserted into Afghanistan, uh, and they've got to find the, uh, the wife of a terrorist who's basically gotten away from him because she's got all kinds of intel. And um, I predicated on an article I read about a hearts and minds group of armed um female uh, U.S. Army soldiers that uh, would travel Afghanistan basically showing, hey, we're soldiers. You know, we got guns, we got ar- we're got we armored up, you know, we're combat ready. Uh, basically to show women in Afghanistan, you know, you don't have to be kicked around, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and basically leading by example, you know, this, yeah. this is what America's like, you know, everybody participates. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I felt comfortable because we don't really have female combat units, but I felt comfortable using that as the premise, the jumping off point, that mostly it's an intelligence operation. So, you know, they, but obviously, you know, they get into shootouts. Mm-hmm. So, nice. so it's a suspense, military thriller, or what have you. But, you know, I tried to keep it as grounded as possible, as, as close to reality as, you know, you can get in the comic book. Mm-hmm. How many pages is this trade paperback? 112. Nice. Whoa. That's a lot of good reading. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of bang for your buck, buddy. I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's a fat story. A lot goes on in it. You know, this is. I don't write for the trade, if you know what I mean. There's yeah. no padding. There's no cereal. There's no fat in the story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Chuck, there's not going to be of of fifty eight pages of that. It's not people sitting around a conference table. No, no. <laughs> you have to have a page after page of two people talking about a third person who's not there, which yeah. is way too often. <laughs> There's no conference rooms. There's no no. It's it's running and gunning for for five issues. Yeah, there's a lot of action. I mean, doing things. You know. When I when I was reading the script before we even started the art, you know, I was just 
really enjoying it. And that's when you know it, it's really well done once you're enjoying the script in your hands. So, um, I mean, he did a fantastic job. Yeah, I, yeah. It, it's based on my fear of boring the reader. I never want to do that. So yeah, I just keep things moving. Well, that's one thing, Chuck, you've never been um, accused of. <laughs> no. I, know, I was just going to say that. that I've been accused thing. of a lot. <laughs> not that though. Not, not that. that though. <laughs> now, with, with the militia, and and even with the subject matter, and especially with what Chuck's success he's just had on Indiegogo <laughs> with the Expendables. Um, uh, Demetrius, have you thought about once this campaign ends to take it over to Indiegogo as well? I I, I was just thinking about it over the weekend, trying to figure out you know how to set it up, and I, I just haven't looked into it enough yet. But I am thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And now, do you I, normally run your campaigns I, through Kickstarter? I mean, this is my second one, so I guess so. Yeah. I I would definitely do that because I think that the audience would, you know, it's, I don't know, just from my, from doing, you know, with the She Book, we'd launch it Indiegogo and Kickstarter simultaneously. And, okay. you know, we have our Kickstarter backers and all, but um, I could just see, I've learned the differences between the two. And it looks like a real no holds barred badass. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. I think the uh, the ass and the... and helicopters and blow and you know children and the jungle and and shoot them up. I think that 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 this is tailor made for an Indiegogo campaign, especially like I said with Chuck coming coming off. Not only is he Chuck Dixon, but also we'll Chuck do a new variant come off of of making almost a quarter million dollars or what on the Expendables. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, the pump's kind of prime for a book like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, such a great, great uh, audience uh, in Indiegogo and stuff that would just really, you know, dig this style book. Would definitely dig, you know, Chuck and everything. I mean, I would definitely, you know, get every, get, you know, run your campaign through Kickstarter and then head on. I think you can actually just roll it right into Indiegogo. Yeah, he, yeah, you can actually, yeah, but that's exactly what, that, that's what we did with Zombie Sama. Yeah. And, um, but the cool thing is, too, is that Indiegogo, as you know, Chuck, and I don't know if you know, Demetrius, once it e- ends after 30 days, it's it, you could put it in demand mode, which is like a store. Okay. And you keep that book running until you either run out of copies or you want to stop it because you want to launch the next one. But you can always launch the next one and keep the first one in demand as well. Okay, yeah, we that's made great. Over 40K okay. on Expendables after the campaign ended. I mean, it's still yeah. going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always good. I mean, Kickstarter is is a is good is a good platform. Don't get don't get us wrong or anything like that. Um, but definitely get your feet wet in both. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just another avenue, another that's platform. It. So for and sure. that's another avenue. It's another store. Um, and and it's a you know what I mean. Sell now. You're not just selling in Walmart's. You're in Targets too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, I, just love- I mean, you guys can correct me. But the audience at Indiegogo is entirely different from the Kickstarter. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And they love this kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, and that in-demand feature is dynamite. I'm telling it really you. Is. That's why, you know, I, I, you know, Billy, like we've talked, I went back and forth, and I was like, nope, when I launch mine, I'm going Indiegogo, and it, it's that on-demand, in-demand feature is freaking great. Yeah, that is pretty cool. You know, because if yeah. you're still, it's, you got two options, right? You know, your book could be done and you can just keep selling it. Or, you know, you could, your book could be, you know, whatever percentage you're done. But then while you're still working on the book, you're still selling the book. So yeah. it's not just, you know, I stopped at a certain point. I can't sell it anymore. All right, we've got, you know, another, you know, two, a month and a half, two months to complete it and then get it, you know, out to our backers. You know, you can just, you know what, we can sell right up to the point you're ready to put that order in. You know, right. it's incredible, incredible. Yeah. But this book, man, you guys, this thing looks freaking awesome. Action-packed, great art, great story. Thanks. I mean, is this going to continue on? Or I mean, if I were to continue it, I'd like to continue it with Chuck at some point. So yeah, yeah, I just – We could do it again. I have so many titles going on, so I'm trying to focus at one or two at a time to make sure I put out the best I can. Yeah. You're going about it the right way. I mean, you got to grow in baby steps. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're putting out – you know, you're not sacrificing quality for quantity, which that's the secret. I've, I've I'm been, not. I'm, I've, I've been taking my time. <laughs> I've seen too many comic book companies go into the ditch by growing too fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. Now you have other titles here in your campaign. Do you want to explain what you have going on in your campaign? So this, I, I try to make everything available so people have a chance to get some exposure to us. Um, maybe get some issues that they may have missed. Um, so this is Cyclist. 
And that's the one that I was telling you about, Kevin Gravel, that, that he wrote this. And Jonathan Lau was the artist. We had uh, Adriano Augusto, who did fantastic work on the colors. And the letterer is Desi Cienti, who's a good buddy of mine. And he's he, he just does a fantastic job on that end. And I just try to put out a couple of pages out there just so they could see the quality of the book, what it looks yeah. like. It looks great. Covers. And we did we did a hollow foil variant. We did yep. a virgin variant. Um, I believe it might be right after that one. That is awesome. Our art's great, man. It is you definitely like Chuck said? You know, you're doing it right. You know. Yeah, you, and we're you, building a lot of good relationships with the yeah. with the shops. Um, they've been fantastic supporting us. Uh, we're a small publisher, so you know we always understand they're afraid to fill up their shelves and mm -hmm. you know put out the money for it, but. Um, I'm glad that it's it's really selling a lot. Um, the, there was one shop just recently sold over 110 issues of ours within eight minutes. Those are great numbers. That is so, fantastic. Now, are you distributing through of. Diamond or are you doing it your own? Through Diamond. Um, but, you know, some people will order through our site and, um, you know, just to catch up because it's not going to be available through Diamond afterwards. So um they'll, they'll, we get a lot of orders afterwards. And, and it, again, people are still finding out about us. We're, we're still very new. Very good. And then you, but you know, you're doing everything like, like Chuck said, and, and you're really doing it right. I mean, you've got a real quality product. Thanks, yeah. guys. I appreciate it. You know, you're yeah. also building a company identity. I mean, there's a there's a feel of these books. You know, there's an earnestness to these books, and that's important. Mm -hmm. If you can get that earnestness across to the reader so they have an idea what to expect when they see your brand name, you know, that's gold. Yeah. No. I'll tell you – Quickly, oh, I was going to tell you about Cyclist, the, the, the idea, the concept behind it, which is one of the ones I love a lot, um, is basically a former FBI agent that becomes a therapist, and he overly gets involved in his patients' lives. Mm. Um, and, and then he's brought back into action. So, <laughs> so um, And then we did Project Icarus, which was written by Andy Owens. He's been around for like 25 years probably. Um, he worked for Marvel, DC, Dark Horse. And Patrick Blaine was actually the artist for all of that. Um, they did a fantastic job on that. Uh, Desi also did the lettering. Uh, colors were by Tio Gonzalez. There's IT that I was telling you about earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, all these books you have to release on Indiegogo. Yeah, okay. <laughs> They're done. You all of them, all right. <laughs> hey, actually, yeah, that's a freaking great idea. You know, have just introduce them all on Indiegogo. It's one whole thing. Pick your tiers. People can just buy what they want. But I would launch, books in one first, shot. But I would launch militia first. Like, like is uh, I, was it Lee who might have said it? But um, that anything with Chuck's name sells. And you've got you know a diamond right there. You've got you know you've got a ringer that you're using. And yeah. if you could use if, if, if not to you no one no one uses Chuck Dixon. <laughs> if you but, but no, that's like an ally like someone like a partner like Chuck in. You have the latest Chuck Dixon comic. That's true. Ooh, you've got the man that's made millions of dollars for DC Comics. I think he's written the most pages in comic history. Is that right, Chuck? That's right. 40,000 40, and growing. And growing, growing, Incredible. growing. Incredible. But I would do, that's what I would do with the plan. I would launch Militia first. Once yeah. Militia is done, the first issue, you know, you get it out to, to, to your Indiegogo audience. Then, boom. Right away, you launch one of your older books to give you time to catch up on the newer issues. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so like I know you mentioned stuff. So, if the, if anyone's interested now in any of these books and they want to catch up on any of these other series or buy individual copies of Militias, they, so the best bet is to head to your website. Black, yeah, blackboxcomics.net. They could get it from there. Um, obviously, their lo local shops are more than welcome to order it if they want to catch up and order extras. They can. Um, so I always tell people because I want to support the shop, so I tell them to try to order through there. All right. And uh, TJ, if you can get a link to Black Box Comics in uh, the chat, that would be most appreciated. Uh, so let me ask you, so how do you like crowdfunding so far, you know, your second campaign? I mean, it's a, a little nerve wracking. It's a lot of work to set up mm -hmm. and you, you want to make sure it's successful. You're just like, I'm putting it out there. And what if it fails? What if it doesn't? So you have all these concerns and you want to have the presentation done properly. But I think for somebody that's you know only done this the second time, we I, we did all right, you know. So I'm I'm pleased with it. Yeah, it's a slow motion horse race. Yes, it's yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very aggravating. So what's next? Uh, what's next in line? You know, once you're done with the militia campaign, what's the new title? So Project Icarus is in stores now. Mm-hmm. After that is Bigs and Tiny, um, and, and it's a five issue series. Um, each one is basically a five issue series, except Cyclist, we did a six issue series. Mm-hmm. And right after Bigs and Tiny is a title I'm working on. I haven't shown any pages yet, but it's called Devil's Dominion, and it's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I can't wait to show the art on that once that comes out. Oh, very cool. Very and Chuck, cool. what's up with you? Yeah, what's new with uh, you, Mr. Dixon? Uh, a lot of things. Uh, oh, boy. Just, you know, working on the novels, Lee Bon Cade. Um, I just uh, got the the uh, first, uh, the script for the first episode of Lee Bon Cade for oh, the cool. TV series. Nice. So, yeah. I heard about Cade. that. Congrats. Yeah. yeah it's, written by, it's written by a writer you might have heard of. It's Sylvester Stallone. Yes. Because so, he's producing it. So that was pretty exciting. So that's moving ahead because I'm tired. It's been, it's been like three years of people going, when's it going to come out? When you yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> The problem when they announce an option, you got to answer questions forever about. It. So, Chuck, when's it coming out? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> All I know is that that Sly is written. When do I get the script for my role? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Sly, Sly has put words on paper, so it is in motion now, officially. Now, have you? Do you pal around with him? No, no, but. You know, We'll talk on the phone now and then. We'll, we'll email back and forth. I mean, he was involved with the Expendables project. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he you know he went to bat for us and got us the the rights to do the comic, mm-hmm. and uh, he gave me the plot line. So, but yeah, every once in a while, one time he called the bitch about the Golden Globes. That was fun. He was just called. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I think because I'm I'm not in the industry, so he knew he could talk to me and I wouldn't yeah. get back to anybody. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's a he's a cool guy and. and you know, unbelievably, he keeps remembering me and, and you know, want, you know, getting me work or agreeing to work with me on stuff. So yeah. it's cool. Well, it's quite, it's, it's good when you become like a trusted advisor, you know, when someone trusts your opinion or, or trusts your work. I mean, you can't go wrong there. Well, it's weird. The first production meeting we were in together, we were finishing each other's sentences. It was really oh, strange. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like yeah. a match made. It didn't made go together. well, but we did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> I recently read that every production meeting goes exactly the same way. And I've read it yeah. from, you know, I've, I've had like directors and producers tell me this. I've had screenwriters tell me every production meeting goes exactly the same way. It doesn't matter who you're meeting. Mm-hmm. So, and mine went about that way. <laughs> now, do you have I was going to show you guys books? real quick. Oh, what you got? Yeah. We'll zoom I don't in know. Now. Let's see <laughs> if he can recognize it. Oh my God. You have that page? What? That's the first appearance of She Page. Holy oh, yep. no, I like what? you for giving you for selling you that. He's a fan. Wow. Wow, that's the very first. When did I say you that? Wow. It must have been like eight years ago. <laughs> Incredible. Wow, so look what else I got. The future. Oh, <laughs> there look you at go. That. Wow. And he's oh, that's awesome. That's so that's cool. the future right there. Thank you, brother, for that. That's uh, Billy's uh, son. It was years ago. It was at um, the one out on Long Island. What was yeah. it called? A- oh, Aviation. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. So, hey, Lou, that was really Lou cool. I would like to know if you could show that piece again one more time, if you don't mind. Oh, that. That's yes. the very first appearance of she. That's my buddy Jay, Mark, and Paul. <laughs> my <buddy. laughs> and that that bottom lower hand right. That's the first appearance of she in comics right there. Wow. Yep. What was that in, Billy? That, Billy? Billy, what was that in? That's the Razor She Annual. Wow. How long ago was that? That was January 19, 1994. Wow. Incredible. We were all just kids with a dream back then. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even know Chuck Dixon yet. <laughs> I saw all these loud guys at a con, and they were just sitting there, and I walked up, and I'm like, are you Chuck Dixon? And he said, I'm off duty. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Buy my book. I never said that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's incredible. So do you have any other books coming up, like comic books or anything you're working on that you can talk about, Chuck? Uh, I got a Catwoman book coming from D.C. I did an eight-pager with Kelly Jones in oh, it. Oh, cool. Nice. Did uh, like huh? 
They let you do that? Yeah, well, the DO left and they remembered my phone number. There you go. <laughs> oh. Seriously, as soon as he was gone, the phone started ringing. I've done quite a bit of work for them. Really? Oh, wow, phone. that's awesome. I'd love. Uh, that's exciting yeah. for me. Yeah, He's a big DC so, uh, guy. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's. Uh, I, I guess he was the reason I didn't work there all those years. <laughs> 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 But I got the, I'm doing a new webtoon project called Go Monster Go. And mm -hmm. we're putting that together now. And uh, with an artist, Tim Lati, it's, um, it's, a uh, it's sort of a retro sixties, you know, monsters and teenagers with hot rods. Kind oh, of. you go. Yeah. Yeah. So and a bunch of other projects. I can't remember. You know, I'm oh, working on a Western now, a Western novel. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Love me some Westerns. Hey, yeah. That's yeah. so, a, um, my friend uh, Peter Bogdanovich directed my friend Steve's movie, and they're like, "What do you want to do next? What do you want to do next?" And listen, and he's like, "I want to do I, all my life. I've always wanted to do a western, and they've never let him do a western." That was a tough sell. Westerns. It's a tough sell. I bought the. Uh, I bought this, Chuck. Let me see if I put it up here. Hang on. What'd you get? I don't have anything to show anyone. <laughs> I got no, some no traps. show and tell for you. That's not interesting at all. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't bring anything from home? No, I don't really have anything here. On your, you know, recommendation. Want to look at? <laughs> on your recommendation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a, a thing in there about production meetings. That's one of the stories I oh, read. I haven't gotten to that yet. I haven't gotten to production meetings yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the chapter it's, on, it's a great read. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, the chapter on Saving Private Ryan is genius. Oh, I haven't gotten there yet either. I sit up he there. He rips out on a new one, so... Oh, cool. Not as bad as I do, but he gave me new reasons to hate that movie. So. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of, we've had our conversations about that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and as I mean, you know, as I guess for the, on the merit and what it, what it meant and everything like that, that's one thing. But there's so many glaring errors. And well, you know, we, that's, uh, yeah. that's a yeah. show for another day. That could be for a D Day show. We could talk. Yeah, we should just do a whole show on that. In, in June next year. We should. We that should. Would be great. That'd be a great idea. What are you doing Saturday? All day. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I right. can talk all day about how much I hate that movie. All right, let's do it. Let's do a show Saturday and we'll talk about it's D Day. Let's talk about Saving Prime Ryan. Do it. Oh, man, I okay. love that movie. All what right, we'll change your mind. <laughs> now, Band oh, of Brothers, that's a different thing. Oh, I love Band of Brothers, man. Oh, no, that's different. That's what was your it. thoughts on the uh, Pacific? Oh, Pacific was awesome. Yeah. That, that fell in line. So, I mean, I talked to a lot of World War II vets, and that film just fell right in line with everything they told me about yeah. how freaking nasty it was. Yeah. I mean, there was nothing in that that thing that was, you know, more outrageous than stuff I'd heard about. Yeah, I've had, well, because I've heard so like mixed reviews, you know, like me and my buddies, like half of us loved it. I care, you know, I enjoyed it. You know, my, my grandfather was in the Navy, so that was his theater. Um, but, you know, then like my other, you know, other half people I know are like, eh, I didn't really care for it. You know, if it, it, it was if a mixed I bag. I saw Band of Brothers, the Pacific would be the greatest war. Right? Yeah. Movie I've ever seen. Yeah. It was just so big because Band of Brothers. To, and we'll talk about this on D-Day. Band cool. of Brothers was so small, you know what I mean? It really was based on a small company of men. Yeah. Really, a, really a platoon of, of that company. Um, right. And the Pacific is literally in the name. It's the Pacific. Yep. <laughs> you know, the whole thing. So it's kind of right. tough to follow a little bit. Yeah. Are they working on a third miniseries? Yeah, but right? Jump I swear I heard right? that was... I saw a teaser thing about the, the, the 8th Air Force. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's like three years ago, and uh, I'm interested in that one because my dad was a bombardier in the, in the Mighty Eighth. So, oh, really? Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, he did 24 or 25 missions before he cracked up. He just couldn't get the plane. Anymore. They sent him home. So, wow. Oh, man. We've got... <laughs> <laughs> You're let's, ready. <laughs> let's keep talking. I've got a friend let's, up here. Let's shine a light on this really quick. Here. <laughs> All right. He did, he did do things for show and tell. <laughs> it All worked right. out, I guess. Huh? It worked I out. What I got here. Oh, great. The <laughs> one up. One upper. One no, upper. <laughs> do I have my. He's going uh, to right. shoot off his roof. You know what? I was just going to say, now, now Billy's going to hold this up. This is where I pull out my bazooka. And and like, oh, up. yeah. <laughs> this is Chuck. This is a. I got the drum mag. Let me see the barrel length. 
It's no, this is an M28 Thompson. It's not real. It shoots blanks. Oh, okay. So it's, it's a movie it's prop. Manufactured in Tokyo, Japan, I think in 1969. <laughs> And it's uh, uh, the M21, 1921 Thompson. Yeah, so it's and the right barrel. Five caliber blanks. Wow. And it, and it, it goes, duh, 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 it's fully auto. Is this badass or what? Yeah, because the ones you can buy, I mean, the actual Thompsons you can buy, the semi auto, the barrel's too long. It's not. Yeah, really it's, got, it's got an 18 inch barrel. Hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. all wrong. Yeah, so if I measure this, probably 10 and a half. Well, yeah, probably yeah. 10 and a half inches. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, we get we got a question that popped a couple times uh, from Lou Chuck. When is the Hot Rod book coming out? My dad really wants to know. Please. Well, it's it's on Webtoon, which is a, a digital only, uh, but it should be out in, like in the next couple of months. I have a Patreon page under Archaven, um, mm -hmm. and uh, you can go there and see some preview artwork. Um, so if you go to Patreon Archaven, spelled the way it sounds, you mm -hmm. can you can see preview art. So and it's a weird it's a weird format because you scroll down as you read it. But yeah. what's cool is that Tim did artwork. I mean, obviously we have we have races in it because it's hot rods. Mm -hmm. And as you scroll down, you follow the race. I mean, it looks oh, like the cars cool. are going down the screen. Hey, oh, TJ, can you that find out. that link for us, please, and post yeah, it? Yeah, TJ, in? Frank, Amazing, or Herrenberg. If one of you guys could get that link, actually, Frank, if you get that link and put it in the show description, that'd be great. Um, and then Chuck, if one of the other guys can get it in the chat. Chuck, this is a real drum mag. Oh wow! If you're not drum mag that they wow. use for blanks, and you load up the blanks in it. <laughs> That's cool. And the springs work, and every it's it's just it's badass, man. Did you ever fire a Thompson? I'd love to fire a yeah, Thompson. Yeah, I did. I did at 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 um, I went. I had the the privilege of going at the Sergeant Rock. I got invited to West Point for a historical weapon shoot. Oh, and, oh my dude! Oh Ooh. my god! Now, but now when I was in the army, you know we had M60s and saws. Right. And when you shoot an M60, right, or it, with the American way of shooting, it's uh, three to five second bursts, right? So you got that gun, and you're like, and you're supposed to count three to five second bursts, three to five second bursts, and that. Brrr. With the German MG42, they had an MG42, uh -huh. and, it, and it, but it's seven to ten second bursts. Oh wow! So I, and and the, and the, the the young mate was like, no, no, you're not. It's not an M60. It's not a saw. He's like, you got to remember, this is a German thing. This is this is ripping 120 rounds, uh, 1,200 rounds a minute, seven to ten second bursts. They say it's a, and and you have a whole ten seconds is a long oh. freaking time. And oh, he, man. I mean, it's like ripping that you know they call it that uh, the zipper, you know? Yeah, yeah. And just, oh man! And it's just brass flying everywhere, and you know, and you just. Tear it up. I didn't hit anything. Actually, That's if you cool. think about it, if you watch like the documentaries and they show the gun and they're playing the sound of the gun, it's yeah, yeah it's like shooting for like eight or ten seconds. Like it's yeah. it's definitely not burst. It's like brrrr. yeah, like it's just constant. Yeah, and 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 even CMG forty twos and saving Private Ryan's, but they don't have the sights up. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but is that Stupid so? I think movie. I just shoot the Thompson. It was an M one A one Thompson. Uh, you know the World War Two one. Yeah, it was great. Because right before I shot the Thompson, I shot I shot the uh, MP40, the German submachine gun, and that's nine millimeter bullets. So that, is, <coughs> excuse me, that's like shooting, you know what I mean, like a BB gun. Yeah, yeah. And then you shoot the Thompson, like pop, 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 pop. <laughs> it was great. You know, I, you got to love World War II, man. I love World War II. I love it, man. You know, the, the, the ammo. And you look, like I said, I was just finding bullets here. And here's the comparisons. If you look at the bullet of, like, the AR-15. Yeah. Right? This is what our military. This is an AR M-16 bullet today. M4, M-16 bullet. This is what they use in the in the dreaded AR-15s. 5.56 or 2.23 millimeter. This is a World War II bullet. That's a 30 out six. That's what went in the M1 Garand. Mm -hmm. Right. So you see the size comparison of, of bullets back then compared to, and this looks like a little, it's a 22 caliber bullet. That's all it is. Well, yeah, it's it's not, you know, it's not a man stopper by any means. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's uh, it's uh basically quantity. Yeah. Yeah. It gives you more chances. So. But we'll do that when we talk Saturday, everybody. If you come back Saturday, we're going to we're gonna have ammo. We'll have gear. We'll Sign have me up. So we'll have all kinds of stuff. I might even dress as a reenactor. How about that? I'll wear my reenactor. There you go. 
<laughs> I'm begging you. Don't do He'll that. even put his parachute on and jump off his roof. Yeah. Get my toy. <laughs> you, can jump, you can jump through the roof right into camera range. That'd be awesome. That's awesome. No, but Chuck, I'm dead serious about us doing that show. Yeah, let's do it. We'll go for an hour even. We'll just talk about we're going to dissect Saving Private Ryan and the best and worst of war films, maybe. There you go. I'm with what you. Is, all right. So, Chuck, what is your all-time favorite war film? Sorry. Uh, wow. Um, yeah, I just made a top ten list. Um, I really like the Thin Red Line, mm -hmm. uh, the Terrence Malick film, which came out the same year as Private Ryan. Uh, you know, and I like the Gonzo War movies, you know, Dirty Dozen, War Eagles Dare, that kind of stuff. But I, but one I'm especially fond of is uh, They Were Expendable. It's a John Wayne film about PT um, yeah. crews in World War II. And it's unusual for the World War II propaganda films is in that it's a, it's a bit of a downer. Because it's, it's literally the middle of the war when they made it. The outcome of the war was uncertain. And the War Department wanted to make sure the public understood what was going on. Because you couldn't fool the public anymore. They couldn't make the rah-rah movies anymore. So they made a movie as, that hewed as close to realism as they could in the 40s. Mm -hmm. And it, it's it's an incredible film. Uh, Robert Montgomery does has a tremendous performance. John Wayne has a tremendous performance. John Ford movie. So it's, that's one of my favorites. That could be our show then. We could talk about Chuck Dixon's top 10. Top 10 war films. And, okay. what's, and what's his least favorite? And what movie does he hate? <laughs> well, I think we made that clear. Yeah, well, uh, it'd be good copy, my yes. friend. <laughs> As they say. I think this is a great idea, Billy. I think it's a great idea. Dimitri, I feel like so many, so many questions, but this is not the time. Dimitri, this is not, this is not the time for me to be talking signal me, about Dimitri. World Just War II. Signal me, signal me. That's all right. Are you a fan, Dimitri? Of? Of? Are you a World War II buff, uh, military buff, or anything like that? Well, I'm actually planning on something based on the World War II, so that that'll cool. eventually Fantastic. come out. Cool. So I, I don't want to get into details because I'm still really early in the process, but I, I'm planning yeah. on. Oh, you got, you got Nazis as bad guys. You simply cannot go wrong. You can't go wrong. <laughs> can't go wrong. <laughs> I want to see if I could fury. quickly just give you an image on this Devil's Dominion thing that we're working on. I don't know if you could see it or not. Oh wow! Oh nice. Ooh. Man, that color is sick. Who nice. colored yeah. that? Carolina Pontes. Really good. She actually, she's very talented. She actually did the uh, one of the pinups on Militia, the one with the red background. I don't know if you saw that. So she, she's really good. She's a good illustrator, good colorist. Oh, fantastic. Well, I can't thank you guys enough for coming uh, on the show. Dimitri, thank you for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate what you guys having me. You, on. you guys are always welcome whenever you want to come on, uh, even if we have a guest or anyone that you're a fan of or someone you'd like to just partake in the conversation, you know, just shoot us a message. Uh, cool. We'll be happy to have you on. And again, everyone, take the time to uh, check out Militia on Kickstarter. Uh, they have, you know, surpassed the goal. They have now 10 days left. Uh, back it if you love, you know, action-packed comic. You know, you're going to lose yourself in this. You're going to get lost in the adventure, in the chaos, in the bullets, in the blasts. So get out there, check out Militia, share it on your Twitter, your Facebook, your Instagram. Uh, continue to help support independent creators. Because that's what we are all about. Everybody's been great. Billy, Thank you. my friend. Another great show for the start Thank of the you. week. Two more to come tomorrow night. Uh, please tune in as we have a launch party. Yeah. 7 p.m. Awesome. for uh, Billy Tucci, uh, Dynamite Comics, uh, Miss Fury. Yeah, I'm bringing Miss Fury back, Chuck. Awesome. Oh. I'm putting oh, her right. Yeah, slide. Summer 1944, sliding her right in, into June Tarpe Mills's. Uh, Continuity with all the original characters. Very cool. Wow. Really his lovely. artist is incredible, Maria. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Maria Laura Sanapo, Sanapo is the artist, and she's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Very, very nice. I, I've heard of her. I've seen her art. She's yeah, really good. She's tremendous. It's it's. She's like a gift from God. <laughs> she's all right. Incredible. Oh, I'm cool. gonna, let's. Uh, do I have one of the promos here, Billy? Where are we at now? Where, what are we? Uh, we got we got less than twenty four hours before we launch. So you know what? Let's uh, we'll do a little sneak preview to uh, the next Ooh. promo that's going to be coming up, right? Okay. Is that what we're going to do? I don't want to hold you guys up here. I'm just going to pop this thing up. Come on now, come on now. There we go. Boom. There you go. So this Ooh, will be uh, launching tomorrow night, seven p.m. Miss Fury.
Only on Indiegogo. Only on Indiegogo. Thank you for that. That making that promo, Nile. Oh, anytime, my friend. Anytime. And All Chuck, right. again, thank you for coming on. Dimitri, thank you for joining us on the show. Thank uh, you we'd guys like for to just do me. a quick shout out to the amazing people we have out in the chat James Allen, Israel, Heroinberg, James, TJ, uh, Lee, Lou. Oh, there's so many here. I'm not going to say the mob seat. Or, or Dale. Star. The rock biter. I mean, there's so many people in the chat here. Yeah, no. James. So many, so many, so many great Yeah, there's people. a lot of people. Thank you all. So we appreciate your uh, participation, and we will see you all tomorrow at 7 p.m. Everyone have a great night. Thanks again, and make sure to check out all three campaigns we had tonight. Back them, share them, and uh, let's keep that indie creativity alive. Chuck see you up. Saturday. Check, yeah, guys. See Bye. you Saturday. All right. <laughs> Bye. See you guys later. Have a good one.